Hey guys, Jaden Irwin here with Little Sticks. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. This is actually a course that I've been wanting to do for a while and just really haven't got around to organizing everything and figuring out kind of what we want to build with it. But here we are. This is the first part of a Dino crash course. I feel like it's really well timed now too because Dino has added a lot of really cool features that we're going to talk about and go through in this course. Um, so like I said, this is the first part. We're just going to start really basic and kind of explain what Dino is, why you should use it, and let's go ahead and get started. So um, you probably are asking what is Dino? You might have heard a little bit about it on Twitter or YouTube, you might have seen some videos and stuff, but you're not quite sure what it is. Um, so really in a nutshell, Dino is a modern secure runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript that uses Google's V8 engine and is built in Rust. All of that really means is that it is a competitor to Node.js. Um, if you've heard of Node, I hope you've heard of Node. It's pretty popular. It's been around for a little while. And if you're using NPM packages, you are using Node. So um, Node is a runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript, which basically means that you can run like a server with your um, like machine level code, and it will run JavaScript and TypeScript. So it's a web server that can run JavaScript. Um, what's cool about Dino is it actually has TypeScript support out of the box. So you don't have to go and do install TypeScript or install TSC and run TSC, set up a package JSON, set up a TS config. You don't have to do all of that with Dino. It just has TypeScript out of the box, which is really cool. Um, and I feel like TypeScript is you know, taking off to the sense that it's almost the default for certain types of applications and certain types of things that you might build. So really, it just makes sense to have your runtime already support TypeScript. Um, it's using the V8 engine from Google, which is inside of Chrome. That's actually what is running your JavaScript inside of Chrome. So really performant, very fast engine to run JavaScript on. And then it's built in Rust, which means that it is a modern machine level language that is being used to build it. Um, it is a direct competitor to Node. It's not something that's like slightly different than Node, trying to do something different. It really is competing head to head with Node. And what's interesting about that is it's actually from the same exact creator of Node. Um, that is Ryan Dahl. So he's the one that invented Node.js and he's creating Dino. Um, there are some talks out there about why he's creating a whole new competitor to Node, kind of starting from scratch. Um, so feel free to look at those online. Um, you can always learn more about this too at dino.land. That's that first site that I was on. So next question is gonna be, why should I use it, right? Node's pretty good. It's obviously very popular. So why should I use Dino? Um, so it's secure by default, which is different than Node. Node kind of has direct access to reading and writing files on your system by default. It just can do that. Dino does not allow that. So if I want to write a file with a Dino package, I have to give it access to be able to write files to my system, which you could imagine on really large applications where security is top of mind. This is a huge advantage because you can say exactly what packages can and can't do with Dino. With Node, you can't really do that. And we've already ran into some instances where Node packages, NPM packages, um, have vulnerabilities in them or updates have been pushed that probably should not have been pushed. And people don't know that it's doing maybe malicious things under the hood inside of all those Node packages. So Dino is a lot more secure by default. Um, another one is that Dino is actually really easy to install and manage. Um, we'll go through how to install it. I'm not going to go through step by step how to install it, but it's essentially one step. It's one command on your system and it will install a single executable to your system versus Node is similar in that sense, but I, I don't know if you ran into Node version manager <laughs> and all of the effort that there is to manage the version of Node that you're using, jumping back and forth between them. It's kind of a pain, to be honest. I'm sure we're gonna end up with a Dino version manager eventually, where you need to be able to jump back and forth between different versions of Dino. But from my experience so far, 
it's been easier to install and easier to manage, um, especially upgrades. Like I can literally just say Dino upgrade and it'll upgrade for me. Um, another one is it's very, very fast. <laughs> um, Node is fast too, but Dino is faster. So you can look at all the benchmarks. It is a very, very fast runtime. Um, uses browser APIs instead of creating their own when possible. What that really means is that Dino is taking a browser first approach. So anywhere that there is a browser API available, Dino is going to use that. They're not going to reinvent their own version of it, much like Node has. Um, and then the it also goes hand in hand, right? So Dino supports fetch out of the box because that's a browser API. So they already support fetch. Um, Node just recently added fetch, but it took a long time to get there. Um, NPM modules and node compatibility. So this is very fresh news as of me recording this. It's like yesterday, I believe, as of me recording this. But Dino now has NPM and node compatibility um, as of version 1.28. So that really means that I can just install and use node packages out of the box. Um, not all of them. They're saying about 80 to 90% of packages, which is a lot. Um, but yeah, it supports Node. So really your packages that you're already using most likely will work with Dino. Um, it's fun to use. In my experience, it's been really fun and easy, intuitive to use. Um, and then the last one on this list is Dino Deploy is their first party hosting service. So they have a hosting service already ready to be used with Dino. It's not like you have just this um, runtime that you can use locally, but you can't really use it out in the wild. I don't know if you've heard about Netlify's edge functions, but those are running on Dino. Supabase has edge functions as well. Those are also running in Dino. So really, you can use this in production already. You're not waiting on some runtime that you can deploy to. Um, it actually is a live hosting service. Um, fun fact, my website is running on Dino Deploy, my personal website, jadenirwin.com. So yeah, it works just fine. <laughs> um, opinion, so it does feel like the future of web development. This is my opinion, it's my prediction, speculation, but this does feel like the future to me, just in my experimenting with it. It just feels like where everything's going. Node might be able to catch up, they might be able to add some extra speed and take this browser API first approach, but it does feel like they're falling behind and it's taking them a long time to get features that are just built into the browser. They just should be available. So yeah. And then we get to this question of how do I install it? Well, we talked about dino.land is their main domain. They have a couple of domains, but dino.land. And then there's this installation hero button right there that will take you to this page. And you're going to see a shell script, a PowerShell script, uh, scoop, chocolatey, homebrew, really name it. You can install it however you prefer. Um, I probably would recommend the shell script if you're on Mac OS or Linux, and then obviously the PowerShell script for Windows. Um, Homebrew works great if you are a Homebrew user. Just go ahead and use that. But yeah, super easy. Just go ahead and run that in your terminal. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but the other side of this installation is not just how to install Dino as a command, but what about uh, VS Code support or your other you know, Vim, um, they do, t I'm not a Vim user, <laughs> but um, yeah, you can actually get some pretty decent support inside of your um, environment. I believe they've got, yeah, so JetBrains, Vim, NeoVim, um, Visual Studio Code, there's a link right here. So this is actually 2.2 on that little documentation that it jumps you to. So VS Code Dino, um, I think if I click on that, yeah, so you'll have your link right there. Uh, it's just called Dino, Dino Land. Um, this is the extension that you're going to want to install. So I already have that installed. One thing I'm going to call out, so if you install this in VS Code, go to Extension Settings, and you are going to want to set this Dino cache URL. So mine's just my base folder dot Dino. Yours might be slightly different depending on your system and where you want to install Dino to. Um, I did set that manually because I was kind of having some issues with it setting that automatically. So you might run into that. I probably would recommend 
setting your base folder, um, you know, dot D now. So yeah, go ahead and jump into that, get it installed, get your VS code extension installed. If you're using VS code, Vim, if you're a Vim user, um, and then yeah, meet me back here and we'll jump into it. So once you have everything set up, I'm going to just go ahead and close these out. We are just going to open a new folder. I already have it here. So Dino crash course is the name of this folder and we're going to create a new file. So this file is going to be main.js, right? It is a JavaScript runtime so we can write JavaScript files and run those JavaScript files. Um, I open a terminal here and let's just do Dino. We're going to do just a little console log. So console this is kind of just a hello world console log. Oh, and this is another thing too. So Dino's VS code extension doesn't automatically set up itself when you in install it. Um, and the reason why is, you know, there's kind of some incompatibilities between NPM or node and Dino. So you're kind of choosing at the folder level to use Dino. So all I'm doing is open up my command palette. So in my case, command shift P and we're going to do Dino initialize workspace configuration. We're going to enable Dino, Dino linting. Um, probably not the unstable APIs because really we're not doing anything unstable. And then we just get that little confirmation. Dino is now set up in this workspace. So it adds a little VS code, uh, dot VS code folder and it is Dino dot enable true. So it's telling that VS code extension, Hey, this folder, this workspace is one that you want Dino on. So it's opt in. Um, we're just going to do a little console log here. So hello from Dino and let's do a little dinosaur emoji. That's funny. Copilot already kind of knew that's what I wanted to do. So hello from Dino. Let's add an exclamation point in there. And then terminal, right? We're just going to do Dino run main.js. There you go. Console logged. Hello from Dino. So pretty sweet. You know, it's like you can do that with node, whatever. Um, but it is running Dino. So Dino run is our command and we're just going to tell it what to run and then main.js. So from here, we can get a little bit fancier. Let's do const name equals Jaden. And then we're going to console log. We're going to use that. So console.log and let's just do hello Jaden. This is Dino speaking. Something like that. So same thing again, Dino run main.js. Hello, Jaden. This is Dino speaking. So it's passing in that constant. Um, cool, right? Basic JavaScript. Um, now let's go and do like a little command line. You can kind of see how, how fast it is to do these types of things with Dino. So let's do console.log. Um, what are we going to do here? So hello. This is Dino speaking. What's your name? And let's do template literal there. So we're not running into, oops. We're going to wrap it with a template literal. That way I can just do the single apostrophe for what's your name. Perfect. Uh, let's just try that real quick. So hello, this is Dino speaking. What's your name? Well, we wanted to actually ask the name. So we're going to do const name equals prompt and copilot's getting it. So our prompt is going to be enter your name and let's just drop the space there and let's go ahead and run it. So hello, this is Dino speaking. What's your name? Enter your name. And we're going to say Jaden. Perfect. Cool. But we're not using that name yet. <laughs> so let's do console log. Hello name. This is Dino speaking. Um, how about nice to meet you? Cool. Enter your name. Let's do Jaden. There's a little typo in there, but there you go. So hello, I'll bring this up a little bit. Hello, Jaden B. <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, so that's running. We've got a prompt and now it's responding from that prompt. Super cool. Uh, what if we want to do like a little confirmation? So the reason we would kind of do this confirmation is we want to maybe write this hello 
text instead of a console log, let's write it to a file. So this is where you can kind of get into more Dino stuff where you're writing files, reading files, that type of thing. Um, so instead of that console log, we're going to drop that. We're going to do const hello confirmation equals confirm. Um, so this is a confirm method, right? And then we're going to say, would you like us to make a hello file? Something like that. Cool. So this is a confirmation, which means we do need to conditionally say yes or no, right? So if hello confirmation, we're going to do this piece here and we're going to do await. So top level await, you don't have to do anything special. You just have a top level await right here. Um, it's not inside of an async function or anything. So await dino dot write text file. And let's call this file hello.txt. So this is just a text file. And we actually need to have our text that we had up here. So this was a console log. Let's just copy that line, put it underneath. And this is going to be const hello text equals that. So the same console log, but we want to take the text, right? Now we want to write that text into this dino.write text file. So hello text. And then let's do an else and say um, no file. Yeah, that's fine. No file created. So let's go ahead and run this. So we're going to dino run main.js. Hello, this is Dino speaking. What's your name? We're going to say Jaden. Would you like us to make a hello file? Let's say yes. Now, this is where that security piece comes in. So Dino immediately asks, hey, we're requesting access to write this hello.txt file to your system. Node would have just created that. Dino's asking and saying, hey, are you okay with us creating this file in your system? We're going to say yes. And then granted write access to hello.txt. Now, if you look over here on our file explorer, we have hello.txt. Hello, Jaden. Nice to meet you. So pretty sweet. You know, we have this top level await dino.write text file. It just creates this simple text file. Um, it's very fast, as you've seen, you know, to just start writing some JavaScript and running it with Dino. Um, we're going to go into more details of, you know, like a little API. We might even deploy that API to Dino deploy. So you can see what that looks like. And maybe I've thought about connecting that to a database and letting you kind of see what that looks like to take a real Dino API and connect it to a real database. So yeah, stay tuned. There's a lot of cool stuff that I'm planning for this little crash course. It is going to be a true crash course, not just, hey, here's a little prompt and command line tool. <laughs> um, not throwing shade at any other Dino crash courses or anything. They're definitely beneficial. That's actually what I use to learn Dino. <laughs> um, but I just want to take a little step further, further for people so they can see how powerful Dino is um, all the way from first part to the last part of this crash course. So stay tuned. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a thumbs up or thumbs down if you didn't like it. <laughs> um, and leave a comment below if you have any questions. So we'll see you in the next one. Peace.